In this webcast, we're going to show you how to interpret a supernova spectrum. Now, if you haven't done the first course in the series, this will be quite new. If you have done the first course in the series, some of this will make sense already. So here's a supernova spectrum. And you can see a bunch of upward bumps, emission lines, and a bunch of downward absorption lines. The first thing you can see is they seem to be paired. You get emission and then absorption just to the bottom of that. That means you've got a p Cygni profile, which indicates that you have optically thick gas in the middle with optically thin gas flowing out. So that definitely sounds like a supernova or some other sort of explosion. But what else can you work? Well, the first thing to do is try and work out whether it's a type 1 supernova like this or type 2 like that. This is from the reference notes. Now, if you eyeball it, you see, for example, that type 2 have a silicon 2 line at just over 6,000. Here, there's nothing really like that. Likewise, a calcium 2 line at about 8,500, but there's nothing really there. So the lights here don't line up at all. But there's a reason for that. This is the spectrum of a supernova if it is very nearby at zero redshift. Most supernovae are millions or billions of light years away, which means that due to the expansion of space, all their lines are redshifted. Now redshift is written as Z, and it's defined as how far the wavelength has shifted divided by the original wavelength. So if we look at this plot and think, does it look like one of these only shifted a bit to the side? We can see it does look a bit like this region over here. So you've got a calcium oxygen silicon line, maybe calcium oxygen silicon, and more silicon and iron and things like that. So it could seem to line up. Whereas if you try and compare it with this, there are only two lines. It's what's this middle one here? So it's been to look like it's a type 1 supernova, but to check, we at least look at the wavelengths. So if you look up the peak here, that's at a wavelength of 775 nanometers. You can read that off the, the graph. And this peak here is at a wavelength of 1046 nanometers. Now, the silicon 2 line here is supposed to be at... 635.5 nanometers. You can look that up in the reference notes. And this calcium line is supposed to be, in the laboratory it is, at 857.9 nanometers. Now here's how we check whether this all works out. What we do is we work out what the redshift would be from this line and what the redshift would be from that line. If they agree, it means this is probably really is a correct identification. This actually is the silicon 2 line that actually is the calcium 2 line. If, if the redshift disagree, we've stuffed up our identification and have to make another guess. So in the case of this line, we can say the wavelength 775 minus where it should be, 635.5 all over where it should be, 635.5 comes out as 0.22. So it's got a redshift of 0.22. So we're looking at observed wavelength minus lab wavelength divided by lab wavelength, and that gives us redshift. And if we do the same thing here, we get 1046 minus 857.9 all over 857.9, and that also comes out as 0.22. So it looks like our guess was correct. This is silicon 2, and this one is calcium 2. And it's all self-consistent because you get the same redshift for both. OK, so we've learnt it's a type 1 supernova. It's at redshift 0.22, which gives us an estimate of how far away it is and how much the universe has expanded. It's still in its early stage because it's got a p Cygni profile, so it must have exploded pretty recently. But there is one more thing you can work out. The peak of the line for a supernova indicates, roughly speaking, the actual redshift of the supernova, whereas the trough is caused by the gas flowing out. So remember you have the supernova, and light tries to come towards us. We are over here, and gets absorbed by the gas that's flowing out. Meanwhile, light goes out sideways and is scattered in all directions, including ours, and that's what gives the emission line. 
What that means is that the separation between there and there tells us how fast the gas is flowing out. Now for this we want the Doppler effect equation, which is the change in wavelength divided by the wavelength equals the change in velocity divided by the speed of light. Once again, this is an equation from the first part of the course, and the second part of the course for that matter. Now in this case, we're looking at the change from the peak wavelength. So the peak is 775, and this trough is actually about 750 nanometers. So that's equal to 775 minus 750 over the wavelength. This is the observed wavelength of the peak, 775, which gives us a delta V is all that times the speed of light which comes out as about 9,677 kilometers per second. Very, very fast. That's typical for a supernova. So when you see something like this, you can work out the redshift, you can work out the speed at which the gas is flowing out, and you can work out what type of supernova it is.